Hurricane Dorian was one of the most powerful landfalling hurricanes on record, and the most powerful hurricane to hit the northern Bahamas in modern times. Hurricane Hunter flights near Elbow Cay, Bahamas, estimated peak winds of 160 knots, or 184 miles per hour, and lowest pressure estimated at 910 millibars. Let's take a look at the history of this powerful hurricane before I get into the chase. On August 25th, a tropical depression formed east of the Caribbean, upgraded to Tropical Storm Dorian shortly thereafter. Dorian moved west-northwest into the Caribbean, but struggled to organize, for now. You can see Dorian circulation here on Guadeloupe and Martinique radars. As Dorian approached the U.S. Virgin Islands, the circulation became better defined. I have some video from Sean Cadison on her sailboat in St. Thomas, taken at the Red Circle. Dorian then entered the open Atlantic. This environment favored significant strengthening. The shear was low, the water warm, and the atmosphere was very moist. Also about this time, the NHC five-day forecast track now had a possible landfall in Florida as a major hurricane. That got people's attention, and everywhere along the path, people started to prepare. I made preparations to chase the Florida coast with James Reynolds, who was flying in from Japan. James and I had been in many intense cyclones. We lifted this fisherman over the seawall during a typhoon in Taiwan. During the night, it became clear that Dorian was going to miss Florida entirely. I needed to get to the Bahamas. Remembering Floyd in 1999, it turned a great abaco. That's where I wanted to go. James was out of touch for almost 14 hours. He called at 3 a.m. and we decided to meet up in Miami. His connecting flight broke down and James desperately tried to find a flight. But at 3 a.m., it was impossible. I caught my 5 a.m. hop from Pensacola to Miami, hoping my connecting flight to Marsh wouldn't cancel either. All right, that is my flight and hopefully they're leaving in about two hours, so we'll see. Not many people on this flight. I wonder why. The hop to Marsh Harbor was short. We encountered a passing feeder band storm just before landing. But it cleared out quickly. Once you get to Marsh Harbor, you can catch a ride on the ferry to Elbow Cay. It was here I met John Oldner, who was going to hope to secure his sailboat. So I joined him. You can see from this map, Hopetown is about four miles east of Marsh Harbor. I knew Hopetown could survive a Cat 3 because I was there in 2011 for Hurricane Irene. I stayed on the busy side of Hopetown and it was perfect for my style of shooting, but Dorian was going to be much stronger. So we motored into a protective cove and settled in at the Hopetown Inn Marina on the west side. John got to work on the Tenacious and I went about to filming the surroundings. One last sunset. During the night, Dorian remained steady at 150 miles per hour. By 8 a.m. the winds were 160, and 11 a.m. they were up to 180. That's where we're going to ride it out in this building behind me, um, or actually in front of me. That's better. John decided not to ride out the storm in his, his yacht over here. So it's going to be John and I over here. 
We'll shoot till it gets too windy and then we'll just dig a hole. was picking up and the dock was underwater so I decided to switch to the surge cam housing. It muffles the sound slightly. Decided to check on John's boat tenacious. It was pulling hard on the port side line. With the wind picking up and water almost a foot over the dock, it was time to exit the structure. I didn't want to go swimming. The arrow shows our location. I knew from experience the strongest winds were not far off and I didn't want to get pinned down.
I think maybe an hour or so away from the eye. Cannot open that door. It swung open and it bent something and now it won't shut all the way. Luckily though, it's uh, going with the wind. We'll have to watch that on the other side. So we finally got the door shut all the way and it's not near as loud. Let's see what we got. I'm getting 931, but it, it hasn't gone steadily up and it hasn't gone down. It sounds different. Yeah, it sounds different out there. But it's still a white out. Yeah, it's ripped all these trees out. Here's a satellite animation of Dorian's approach to Great Abaco. Notice the eye becomes less cleared out as it nears. Another reason I wanted to get as far east as possible. Sun's out. Sun's out. Yeah, it, it jams up right here. It can't go too far. The water right there. Notice that even though we just entered the eye, it's still windy. The backside hits. Oh, look! Look! Oh, look at that. Look at that. There you go guys, right there. There you go. Here is a GoPro still. I accidentally put the GoPro in photo mode. Shots like this I dreamed about. We're in the eye, it's, you can see the full circle here. Right there, over there, and it goes all the way around. And sometimes it, uh, Clouds up a little cirrus. It's really, really bad. Uh, that is really something. Well, I did get it. I got, I got, yeah, I went right over us in Hopetown. I can see a lot of boats that are pushed up on the beach or on the shore. All along here, there's not a boat out here. So if you had a boat in the cove here, it didn't make it. John's boat is underwater. 11.55, this is central time. So it'd be about one o'clock here. And here's the pressure. 911.2 is the pressure I'm getting. That is the, the edge there. It's clearing out right here. It's clearing out right there. Look at that. Okay, so we're picking up a little breeze now. And it's coming from this direction. That direction right there, that's gonna be our new wind direction. So we're gonna be okay, we'll be able to get out. In the eye of a Cat 5. Oh man. 
Oh man, I have a cat five. Uh, I can't see, but that's it's blue. There's the sun right there. And now for the second half. After the eye, you're getting the backside eye wall. Wind direction, about 180 degrees difference. We're hearing sounds and something going on up above. We're on the first floor. Oh boy. Blowing too hard to go out. Way too dangerous. Come here, Jim. Yep. Good to Lock. Got it? Don't go out there. In Cat 5 hurricanes, the visibility drops to feet, and it's a total whiteout. As Dorian wobbled northwest, we're on the edge of the intense core, transitioning to lower winds. The lighthouse up there, you can barely see it though. Here is a visible satellite animation showing Dorian's approach to El Boque and Abaco. At nightfall, Dorian moved due west toward Grand Bahama, where it stalled until September 3rd. That meant that Great Abaco and El Boque got the continuous counterclockwise spiral feeder bands of heavy rain for over two days. During this time, we kept in touch with family with these texting devices. The Garmin Mini and Delorme inReach. They were painfully slow, but better than nothing. Finally, on September 3rd, the weather cleared, and I could do some filming. You could see across the cove to Hopetown proper. A dramatic difference from Cat 3 Irene in 2011. A small plane flew overhead and then continued north up the caves. I suspect they were hit just as hard. I later heard that all the ferries sank. More and more choppers were buzzing overhead on day four. We made our way across the cove and I filmed some of the damage over there. Especially heartbreaking was the coffee house, where I stayed for Cat 3 Irene.
the cleanup began in earnest, and even the chickens reappeared. Who knows where they went during the storm? Water's getting low, but we may have some rainwater to drink here soon. We had actually run out of drinking water the night before, so our situation was tenuous. We drank bottled water salvaged from the sunken boats. We managed to catch a hop over to Marsh Harbor. I took this last shot. Hopetown was not livable and most everyone was evacuating. A few hours later we got on a small plane to NASA. The storm surge was really bad on Abaco. It was a hundred miles to get to Nassau. The airport was open and we waited for flights back to the US. It was good to be going home. 